planet um, for a variety of reasons. I think what I would have to say to people is get ready. Whatever preparations you're going to make, make them the best that you can. Uh, if you are intending to make a major life change, make it. If you're thinking, well, I'll wait till next year, don't. If you can do it now, do it. If you can't, well, then make <laughs> do the best you can. I don't know what more to say. Everyone's situation in life is different. You simply can't offer a one-size-fits-all prescription to everyone across the board, nor should I, nor should you. Everyone at the end of the day is responsible for themselves, for their family, for their own situation, for their own conditions for their own preparations, for their own own thoughts and actions. So all I can say is, from what everything that I see, we all, individually and collectively, are going to go through, to live through, to experience highly momentous times in the coming months, uh, certainly later this summer, but for sure this fall, this coming fall and this winter in the Northern Hemisphere, of course, understanding that here in the Southern Hemisphere, the seasons are reversed. But yes, over the coming half year, three, six, nine months, big things are coming down the turnpike toward us. So whatever you have to get, do to get ready, seek your own inner guidance, seek your own outer guidance, both inner guidance and outer guidance. Prepare yourself the best you can in your situation wherever you find yourself. More than that, you can't do. And more than that, I can't say. I would add, however, that using the freight train on the railroad track analogy again, if you have the means to step off of the railroad track when you see a freight train bearing down on you, by all means do so. You are, giving feet, you are given feet for a reason, so use them and step aside. If you are able to sell your, save yourself, you have a mind to save yourself. Um, I would certainly advise anyone, if you're able to, to preserve your own life. Life is worth living, and that extends to your family and other people close to you as well. You're here for a reason. You have a life for a reason. So live it and preserve it if you're feasibly able to do that. that that's both your privilege and, I believe, also your responsibility. Now, I have come to South America initially on a vision, vision quest, but decided to stay. I would say that if there are others who have the desire and the calling and the means, the financial means, to come to uh, South America, you're certainly able to. I do know people with property to sell, including a couple of large properties, including one large, very large, very nice Estancia in Uruguay that runs to 2,500 acres. The asking price is in the, the low seven figures, but if an individual or group, this could be a group of people conceivably who would want to set up an intentional community in the, in the Southern Hemisphere, now is the time to do it. And if a group wanted to get money together and come down and build, build houses and, and make an intentional community, I'm saying now, right now, is the time to do that, not five years from now not three years from now, not two years from now. What's going to be happening in the pretty near term is so big that if you're going to make a change, if you're going to establish a radiant zone or a safe haven or go to a safe safe haven, and if you were waiting for someone to tell you, hey, it's time to do that, well, I guess this is your wake-up call and step to it because time is a waste and I may be contacted through my blog. Yes, thank you. And um, I agree. Uh, many on the forum actually do think that um, time is quite short, and um, and that will lead to the data gap um, discussions in the next section. But um, for the moment, if you don't mind, we just have a quick one minute break. People yeah. have to go to the loo. Thank you. We're speaking with Richard Souder. Please support him by purchasing his great books from Event Horizon Chronicle. Blogspot. Com. Once again, that's Event Horizon Chronicle. Blogspot. Com. The next section of questions is from the new energies and data gap from Cliff's work. And the first question is Uranus. I'm back, Richard. Um, 
We're entering into a different part of the galaxy, one where the Earth and humanity has never been before. We will be, if not already, encountering different energies, and these may affect our sun, the planets, the Earth, and, of course, humanity. How do you see or experience these new, new energies, and what have you been told, or what do you envision will be the effects of these energies? Yeah, this this is a very important and perceptive question. Um, I agree with the premise that we are entering a new part of the galaxy, that there will be new energies coming into the Earth. In fact, these will be divine energies. We're already feeling the the bow wave, the bow waves of these. Uh, arriving waves, large divine waves of energy, knowledge, etc., that are that are coming our way, and people are intuiting that something is going to happen. Um, like any large wave, uh, there'll be a certain amount of um, of shock involved when it hits, or as it hits, and what is not able to ride the wave, so to speak, or to float on the wave will be um, smashed by it. Looks like that's what's going to happen. Uh, the wave knows its own, so to speak, and calls to to them, and they respond. I, I had an interesting experience about three or four years ago where I laid down to sleep one night, and um, as soon as I laid my head down and closed my eyes, in that split second, I mean in one second, I immediately thought um, that I was dying first for about five sec- seconds, and then I figured out I, I wasn't dying, that something else was going on, because such a dramatically... Um, violent vibration and shaking ensued that I thought, well, this is it. You know, I'm flopping like a fish and the next thing I, I'll see will be the, the big tunnel headed for the pearly gates. Well, it didn't quite work out that way. But the shaking was so violent that then I thought, well, this is an earthquake. We're having a huge earthquake, like a point, you know, 8.0 or 9.0 or something. Well, I was living in San Antonio, Texas at that time where, where you simply don't have earthquakes like that, not even small earthquakes. So after a few seconds, I decided, mm, it's not that either. It's not an earthquake, and I'm not dying. So what is it? It was something that I had never experienced before, and I thought, well, I'm going out of the body. It's kind of like a mystical or ex- uh, a spiritual experience, and I've been out of the body many times out of the body in the way that Robin and Roe or people like that would, would use the term. And then I figured out, no, this isn't quite that either. And then I thought, well, maybe it's the Kundalini because I've ha- had a variety of Kundalini experiences over the years, years, and some of them have been quite powerful. But then I decided, well, it's not that either. And all of this happened in 10 or 15 seconds, you see, and this was just a tremendous shaking and and the violence of it was 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 just enormous, and then I intuited that the the core of the earth was flipping. Let me repeat: I intuited the core of the earth was flipping, and I had tuned into that directly. Um, now understand: there are thousands of miles between between the surface of the earth and the core of the earth. So whatever happens in the very core of the Earth, um, all else being equal, has a certain time delay, and it's working out to the surface. I don't know what all of that entails. I just knew that I had immediately, immediate, immediate intuition that what was happening was that the very core of the Earth was flipping, and, and that therefore um, everything else on the earth was, after a delay, a period of time, going to be 
shall we say, turned topsy-turvy. So I'm expecting that there will be dramatic geophysical events, even more so than we've seen in recent years, months, and weeks, and that when people talk about a um, possible shift of the axis or a change in the physics, as one of my sources told me one day when I was asking him about the reason for making these vast secret of underground bases, and he said, oh, I suppose one of the reasons could be a possible change in the physics of the Earth's rotation. So yeah. that is the kind of thing that is yeah. the kind of thing that I experienced when I lay my head down to sleep mm. sleep just a few years ago. And um, then I also examined that with reverse speech. I with one of the better um, reverse speech analysts, not not David Oates, but someone else um, who's very good in my view, possibly as good or maybe even a little better in some respect. And one of the things that I said in reverse speech about this event was Elohim's inbound. Hmm. What does that mean then, Richard? Well, Elohim, of course, is the plural word in Hebrew for God, gods. Well, so in reverse, I said Elo Elohim's. I don't mm -hmm. speak fluent Hebrew, so I put the English plural ending onto Elohim. So I, it, was, it was my my way of reverse and saying God. So we're dealing with God, a divine reality here. Inbound. Elohim's on the way. The mm. gods are coming to earth. Wow. Which many other people have said. So two things are going to be happening, more or less simultaneously, or maybe first one than the other. And, and the one thing is that there is going to be cataclysm. In fact, natural catastrophes have already begun. Thousands of people in Minot, North Dakota, have been flooded out of their homes and have lost everything in the last mm -hmm. two days. There will be more of that. There are people in Arizona who have been burnt out of house and home in the last two or three weeks. There will be more of that. There are people in Japan who in the last three months have lost everything because of the earthquake and the nuclear, ongoing nuclear disaster. So there will be more of this in the United States, in Japan, and other countries. We, are ent we have entered into a period of turmoil, trouble, catastrophe, and cataclysm. My suspicion is what the bone lady told me, what my dreams and visions have shown me, what other people are seeing in their dreams and visions, that we are going to have a lot more of this and worse. Sad to say, probably much worse. At the same time, a lot of people are likely to be leaving this physical realm for a variety of reasons in a variety of ways, in large part because of these problems that will have already started to set in and that, and that will come down on us with a vengeance in the coming months in, in two, three, four, five, six, ten years. Beyond that, beyond that, understand that um, childbirth does have pangs and that the outworking of a karmic cycle necessarily means, in a manner of speaking, there is a harvest of souls to which um, I make allusion in my most recent blog posting. The final mm -hmm. meter measures .999. It does appear that there is a harvest of beings, of souls, of lives at the end of a grand age. And we are, it appears, approaching the end of a grand age where old things are ending and new things will be beginning.